is good, YouTube? Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to you on a quick video. I wanted to let you guys know I got some new merchandise available, not just t-shirt anymore. I got different type of t-shirt, different type of shirts and logo that you can purchase on my spread shirt and also hoodies now. We have expanded and added more to the channel and more merchandise for the brand. Thanks for supporting. It will be in the description and the links will be in the comment section below. Thanks for helping me and supporting the movement. Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis. I'm going to check out the video. What's good, YouTube? Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to y'all with another video. We're going to talk about another free agent signing. A guy that has been on a lot of different teams for a lot of different seasons. But he still finds ways to make a roster and people still respect him around the league, whether it's players, coaches, or, you know, organizational people, because they feel like he gets, you getting what you get. When you get Corey Brewer, he's going to bring fight, hustle, energy, effort, and it can be contagious depending on what roster they own and what's the impact and where the game is at at that time. <clears throat> He is getting older, um, but he still has been able to make rosters. I know he only got three 10 days. He had a 10-day with the Philadelphia 76ers, and he played valuable minutes for them. Didn't really give them what they needed, but he didn't disappoint. But they ended up getting Jonathan Simmons and obviously James Ennis, who are better players at this point. But he could have signed there for the rest of the season, if not for the trade deadline. He probably would have stayed on that roster. But since they were able to fill those voids through trades, honestly and truthfully, they did the right thing. And those guys are better floor spacers, too. So they're a better fit. Plus, you know, Corey Brewer a lot older. Um, he, he doesn't play defense as well as he used to. Back then, he was one of the better defenders. He was going to guard multiple positions. He has the ability to switch and guard one through four because of his length and because of his burst. Um, he can, and the fact that he's a physical defender, he likes to get up and in you. He likes to touch you and make you feel his presence. I think that that works, especially against certain guys. So I, I remember watching him versus James Harden. Obviously, he played on the Rockets, and he played against and played with James Harden, and he was able to really make it a little frustrating for him because he always moving. He's always trying to, you know, be physical and get you off balance. And he did a, a decent job considering that he is older. Um, ain't like he's 35, 40, but he still has a lot of athleticism. He still has a lot of quickness, and he still has a lot of energy. Um, and a lot of those things you can't really teach because it is effort and energy that you want to do that. You, you really want to make an impact. And I feel like that's good, like to pick up Corey Brewer for a 10-day contract, and he, he, he comes right in and – goes right at James Harden from the jump. He he gets in the game and, you know, he, he didn't lock him up because James Harden is virtually unguardable. But I like the fact that, you know, he, he's brought in to be that type of guy and he serves that role every time he gets picked up. It is kind of sad, honestly, to see a guy like Corey Brewer that you know can play, literally bounce around from team to team and team can act and can't really find a home at this point and can't really get at least a two- to three-year deal. But this is a guy that when you ask him to come in, he's going to do his job. This is a guy that, you know, he's just happy to still be in the NBA, and he's enjoying the grind. He's enjoying um, just playing. Because obviously, you know, when you're not starting long-term and people are not trying to keep you for the whole season or people just need you for a particular time, it can hurt because you definitely want to be – sign for the rest of the season and be on the Pacific team as long as you can. You don't want to be going day to day hoping you can make a team, hoping somebody needs you, and you don't want to get rusty or, you know, get fat because the longer you out, the more, you know, you have a temptation of getting out of shape. And for him to be able to be ready, stay in shape, and, and be able to take the calls when they need them and come in and make an impact or come in – and do what they need him to do right away without being mad, without complaining, without being frustrated. It just shows you how good of a veteran he is. And I think that's something that I had to bring up because a lot of people can't do that. A lot of people rather just go overseas because the money is there. Plus, they get a chance to, you know, enhance their stock a little bit, playing better overseas than in the NBA. But the fact that he's not scared to wait months and 
weeks not to get a team, but he, he's willing to take a 10-day just to prove that he still belongs in this league and he still can be an asset on a team. You have to give him a lot of credit for doing that because he could easily just go overseas and, you know, play over there, but he really wants and his heart is really in the NBA. And he has proven that time and time again, you know, waiting the whole, like he, he basically missed the whole first half of the year um, this season, but he still was able to hold out and make it to an NBA roster again. Now, will he make it for the rest of the season? I think that that's debatable. Obviously, he only played seven games this year. He shot 40% from the field, 28 from three. 70% for the free throw line. He gave him two rebounds and one steal in seven points a game in 20 minutes. Now, those numbers don't scream craziness. Those numbers don't blow your mind. But what they will do is let you know that he's productive when he gets the time and he's productive when he gets the minutes. He, he's coming in and giving you transition. He's coming in there giving you hustle. So at least you know what you're getting when he comes in still. I like Corey Brewer. I respected him for the last couple of seasons that he's been in the NBA. And I think he he's starting to value it more and more as he gets closer to retirement and the fact that teams really hasn't been able to give him a long term commitment that he probably will prefer. But, you know, still being able to make a roster and people still showing that they need you and they still value you and they still respect you and knowing that he's still ready whenever his number is called shows you the type of guy that he is and the fact that he hasn't gave up on the dream of playing in the NBA still. And he still shows that he can give you quality minutes depending on what lineup, depending on what you need from him. He's going to take the money and take the opportunity and he's going to make good use of it. And that's what you want out of a guy. He's the definition of a veteran. He really is. He, he really has that next man up mentality. He really has that that personality where it doesn't bother him. And it's not a pride or ego thing. It just, when, when I'm needed, I'm about to come in and do my job and try to do a spectacular job at that. Now, will he sign with the Kings for the rest of the year? That's the next question I know you guys going to answer, so I'm going to answer it. I can definitely see him stand for the Kings with the rest of the year because they don't really have that much depth at the small forward position. They have multiple guys that can play the position, and they got a permanent player in Harrison Barnes that they picked up through the trade deadline. But once you look at the complete roster, they don't really have that many forwards at the size and the length of Corey Brewer. So he can actually make an impact because he's a 6'9 small forward. Um, and like I said, he can guard certain power forwards because of that length and that athleticism. But not only that, the, the Kings really don't have guys that can come in and give them consistent minutes at those positions. I know Harrison Barnes is going to get the bulk of the minutes, but you still want guys that can come in and impact winning because you are trying to go into a playoff run and you want guys that's going to help impact you and give you a good chance of winning. So when Harrison Barnes do get his 35 to 40 minutes, you want somebody that can come in and, and give him some 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 valuable minutes that can help you contribute to winning. And that's what Corey Brewer can do. He can come in and guard multiple positions. He can come in and, and, and defend it. And he can come in and knock down shots. He's not the greatest three-point shooter, but he's not scared to take wide open ones. He's not scared to put the ball on the ground and get layups. He's not scared to kick out. He's not scared to play off the ball. He's a guy that knows what he can do and what he can't do, but he's still going to try to find a way to, to, to make a difference when he's out there on the court and to pick him up for basically nothing and him having the opportunity to go to a team that really does need to, the depth at that winning spot and they need somebody that can come in and give them consistent minutes. Corey Brewer is that guy. He's the perfect guy for them, and that's why they gave him two 10 days. He hasn't played for the Kings. And he he might play a couple games, but I think that he he I think this is a team that can use a guy like Corey Brewer, especially because they're young and they're trying to have some veterans that know how to win. Because Corey Brewer done played on teams that has made to the playoffs. He has played on teams that got decent in went decent in the playoffs. So he knows a lot about winning. He knows a lot about what it takes to be a good team and how to make it to the playoffs. And that's something that the Kings are trying to figure out. Plus, like I said, he's a guy that can give you. 15 to 25 minutes and make a decent impact on the game 
whether it's just through intangibles or through just wanting it more than other players on the court, whether that's on his team or on the other team. That's something that you can't teach, and that's something that a lot of players can't give you right now. But Corey Brewer can, and to take him off the market allows you to you know, take advantage of a guy of this caliber and the fact that you're not giving him a long-term commitment or he's not going to eat up all your salary cap or he's not going to really put a hole and make you make a mistake. If you do keep Corey Brewer, you're not going to pay him that much. He's not going to require that much money, and you're only going to really sign him for the rest of the season. And after that, you'll get your roster spot back, and you'll get your cap space back so you can use it on somebody else. He's just a guy that can fill in the position and going to give you guaranteed production. And that's about what you need right now when you're trying to make a run at the playoffs and you're trying to win games. I think he impacts that more than a lot of free agents that's available right now. And I think that they need more veterans on his roster and they do need somebody that can give them legitimate minutes when Harrison Barnes or other players go to the bench. He can give you that. And that's something that he's been able to do even with Philly. But I think Sacramento needs him more than Philly because of Philly acquisition before the trade deadline was over. Sacramento didn't really fill those spots. They, they filled it for the starters, but they didn't fill it when rotation players. They still need a better bench, and they still need people that can come in and contribute consistently, especially after losing Justin Jackson. And Corey Brewer can replace what he can do for basically less money. And you're not going to complain about that if you can get a quality player for basically less than a million dollars. You're not going to really complain too much about it if you're a team or owner. And that's why I feel like Corey Brewer can find a home for the rest of the season on the Sacramento team. But if he doesn't, I definitely think he'll find a, a team that can sign up for the rest of the season because he still have value of a veteran and a guy that can really make an impact when you give him the right team, the right to line up and the right type of job. He can still give you valuable minutes. And that's important right now in the NBA where the teams are so stacked and they have so much talent available. You want a guy like Corey Brewer that can give you guaranteed production. And that's something that he has done for the last three to four years as a guy that hasn't been able to get the long-term commitment, but when he's at, when he's available, he answers the call and give you what you want and what you need and what you expect, and I give him credit on that. So let me know what you guys think. Do you think he should stay with the Sacramento Kings? Do you think they need him? Do you think they don't need him? Do you think this is a good pickup? Do you think it won't matter? Do you think they need somebody to back up Harrison Barnes other than, um, obviously, the guy that they have, um, um, Troy Williams, who isn't a proven player and isn't a guy that can really impact winning right now. But at the end of the day, they need a forward. They need a guy that can switch and play multiple positions, and it gives them another dynamic when they need it, and it gives them another you know diversity and variety that they can do um, until they figure out if they want to keep them or not. But I definitely think that he can stay on this team. I definitely think he can help them out right now. And he's a guy that they really need, and he's at a position that they need. And I can really see this going somewhere special um, two weeks from now when this 10 day is up. Plus, it's not enough free agents that can do what Corey Brewer can do right now. And I think this is a, a position of need for the Kings. Check out my website, AnnalysisPlayground.com. Link in the description and comment section below. Check out my Facebook page, AnnalysisPlayground.com. Link in the description and comment section below. Like on Facebook to show support. Um, let me know what you guys think. I enjoy making these videos. You guys enjoy watching. That's why I continue to go. Check out my channel. I got plenty of playlists about breakdown, summer league, NBA draft, season preview, hottest topics, buyouts. I do everything I can when it comes to basketball, and I try to do a 365 and I miss that many days. Like I said, I love making these videos. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you guys think about the Sacramento Kings picking up Corey Brewer for two 10-day contracts and potentially for the rest of the season. I think that's a good pickup for him.